Uh, that basis, that, that's a good story behind that because I sent, uh, well, uh, Don Calloway, you know, was coming to work some Indies in Montreal and he yeah. was part of TNE. So, oh, uh, Don Callis? Don Callis, yeah. <laughs> Don Callis, sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, which he was supposed to be a former partner of Rick Martel, but Rick had decided to go by himself to WCW and all the work that they did yeah, they for a year. Yeah, they were the models, right? Yeah, yeah they I did remember. the work. They worked for a year as the models and at the last second, Rick, you know, scrapped that thing and went by himself to WCW. Yeah. And just because Don told me that, you know, he was a little bit not pissed because he had learned some good experience and it was, you know. But he never really got of, over huge. Yeah, no. But he wish he would have had. Oh, this, he. Uh, this comes back to me. They were called the Truth Commission. Baby. No, remember Don. Ke you, you asked yeah, me yeah. earlier about the military guys. Yeah, Don the Truth Callis Commission. was the manager. The Truth Commission. Yeah, and then he okay, was, he was supposed to be a good talker. Yeah. He, they had him talk for uh, an hour. You know. Yeah. He was just talking. Right. And nothing was happening. Uh, okay, so you went to T and uh, so Don Callis got you in TNA. Yeah, I, I gave him a tape and he gave it to Jeff. When yeah. Jeff knew me. Yeah. And my tape was my three way against uh, Zami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Okay, so you'd already been uh, so training with him. So this was an amazing, crazy match. That uh, it's on YouTube if people want to see it. PCO against Kevin Steen and El Generico, which is Sami Zayn and. Kevin Owens, and the three was crazy, and I sent that to uh, TNA, and they looked at it, and right away, uh, Generico wasn't big, Kevin wasn't that big, like back then, he was probably 220, and Before Generico. he went on his McDonald's diet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but at least, you know, he, he knows it and he doesn't care about it. But uh, Generico was probably 175. So they saw the match and they figured uh, this guy can work with our guys in the X Division. So went on into a Battle Royal X Division, won the whole Battle Royal. And um, what happened next? I had a few matches with different X Division guys. The thing is that they were poor as far as money. And most of the guys were driving all the way from anywhere in Ontario or Ottawa to Scott Damore's house. And then they were like driving with a van from Scott to Detroit and flying off Detroit to Nashville on Southwest cheap. But me living in Montreal, there was no way I did it once. <laughs> I did it once all the way to Scott Damore. It was a long way. Uh, there was no way I was going to do that for every Wednesday night, so they flew me straight from Montreal. So my plane ticket was around five, six hundred, sometimes eight hundred dollars plus my payoff. I was costing them a lot of money for the X Division. So after three months, you know, I got released. So. But you ended up working, not with them, but you were the French commentator for TNA for a long time. Yeah, for almost five years yeah. uh, until I decided to, uh, to quit. To, uh, but I was working in Puerto Rico, I think, when you came here. You came to Puerto Rico yeah, in 2005. Yeah, I was there in the, yeah. In so I started uh, right after Puerto Rico. I met Mark Blondin there. He was on a cruise uh, doing some islands and everything. So I met with him and he asked me if I was going to be interested of doing that. And I said, yeah, well, I'm finishing uh, here in Puerto Rico. I'll go back in Montreal and I'll do the voiceovers with you for uh, the French commentary and uh, uh, for the TNA shows. And that really got over big in Quebec. The, the stuff that we were doing, me and Blonde and the TNA. And then after that, I quit by myself because I really wanted another real good shot at WWE. And I went to work back in England for Brian Dixon in 2008. Yeah, you wanted to go full time to uh, show Full time. WWE. And uh, I always had in my mind that if uh, WWE comes to Montreal and I'm from Montreal and I show up at the Bell Center, 
for them, it's just another guy showing up. But if you're from Montreal and they have a show in Birmingham, England, or in London, England, and you show up there, you're busy doing something. You're wrestling every night. So that was my thought. You know, I, I always wanted to be outside of Montreal to meet them. So I was meeting them in Germany, meeting them in England, meeting them in other places. Uh, and that's that's a, that's the way I always thought, you know, just to, to make it look like uh, wrestling is your full-time job.